Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today in the first reading, it says that the people of God are like tall trees, like the cedars of Lebanon. Uh, but the classic image of the people of God is that we are like a vineyard and like grapevines that must bear good fruit. Let's begin this Mass by asking forgiveness for our sins, for the times we have not borne good fruit of salvation for ourselves and others. Let's ask God's mercy. Lord, you're sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye ha can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. All the citizens of Shechem and all Beth Milo came together and proceeded to make Amiblechek king by the terebinth at the memorial pillar in Shechem. When this was reported to him, Jotham went to the top of Mount Gerizim and standing there, cried out to them in a loud voice, Hear me, citizens of Shechem, that God may then hear you. Once the trees went to anoint a king over themselves, so they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree answered them, Must I give up my rich oil, whereby men and gods are honored, and go to wave over the trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, Come, you reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Must I give up my sweetness and my good fruit and go to wave over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come, you, and reign over us. But the vine answered them, Must I give up my wine that cheers gods and men and go to wave over the trees? Then all the trees said to the buckthorn, Come, you reign over us. But the buckthorn replied to the trees, If you wish to anoint me king over you in good faith, come and take refuge in my shadow. Otherwise, let fire come from the buckthorn and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. O oh Lord, in your strength, the king is, king is glad. In your victory, how greatly he rejoices. You have granted him his heart's desire. You refuse not the wish of his lips. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. For you welcomed him with goodly blessings. You placed on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked the life, asked life of you. 
you gave him length of days forever and ever. The Lord is your strength, the King is glad. Great is his glory in your victory. Majesty and splendor you conferred upon him. You made him a blessing forever. You gladdened him with the joy of your face. God is living and effective, able to discern the reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them on the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. On receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last ones worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I'm not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. My sisters and brothers, this is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. From the very beginning of the church, there has been an issue that the people of God had to face and had to deal with. And the issue was, we gathered to celebrate the Lord's Supper, that's what they called the Eucharist at the time. There's no church buildings yet. They're meeting in, in, as basically small faith groups in people's homes. But everything is centered on the Lord's Supper on what Jesus did at the Last Supper. When he took that bread and consecrated it and became his, and said it was his body, and took that cup of wine and blessed it, and consecrated it, and told them this was the cup of salvation, the cup of his blood, take it and drink. Everything was focused on that. The issue became very early in the history of the church, as a matter of fact. We know, because St. Paul wrote about it and warned them about it, 
St. James wrote about it and warned them about it. St. <clears throat> Peter wrote about it and warned them about it. And of course, Jesus talked about it and warned them about it. The issue that has, I'm going to say, troubled the church to this very day is do we focus so much on what we do here at the altar that we don't pay attention to what we're doing out there? That's a no-no. That's a red flag. I know I've quoted uh, many times before you, but uh, when Pope Benedict XVI was our Pope, <clears throat> he said publicly, I still remember this, one of the great errors of the modern era is, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing his words, one of the great errors of the modern era that many people have fallen into, including many in the church, is the separation between what they do at the altar and the life they live out there. And if we are disciples of Jesus, we cannot do that. Jesus gave this parable to alert us that what we do here is the beginning of our, our journey out there. That's why we go from the altar out the doors into the world to make Jesus present in the world around us. Now, please don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying we don't need to come to Mass or Mass isn't important. It's a source and a summit of everything. But this is our starting place for the day. The truth of the matter is, and we see this in the parable that Jesus gave, who are the laborers today sent into the vineyard? It's you. It's me. It's Father Mark. It's all of us. It's every baptized believer sent out there to develop, to build the kingdom of heaven by everything that we do and everything that we say. Every single one of us has been called. Every single one of us has been chosen. Every single one of us has been sent. And I know I talk a lot about this, but it's because I've met so many people in the church over my 40 years of diaconate who don't believe that of themselves. They're not sent anywhere, they think. I, I, I come to Mass, I'm doing what they told me I have to do. But to leave everything here, and that's only half the story. If we don't take what we celebrate here into our lives out there and live it by being active disciples of Jesus, that should be a red flag. I remember several years ago <clears throat> when my wife was working for WorkNet, she was an employment counselor, dealt with people coming in off the streets, etc. She used to tell me, this place is crazy. They, they give me 10 minutes to fix them, get them set for a high paying job, which doesn't exist. Right? And I have to fix them. Some of them have drug issues, and alcohol issues. I'm supposed to fix them in 10 minutes. Doesn't work very well. But I remember one day she came home shaking her head and said one of, my, one of her coworkers used to brag about how active she was in her parish. It's not this parish, it's an anonymous parish somewhere in Stockton, but not this parish. This co-worker used to brag about how active she was in the parish. And she said, the problem is, after she's told us all the wonderful things she's doing in the parish, she's the biggest backstabber among us. And, and the message she gave to me was, this co-worker is not living what she's professing to believe. Climbing over people, stabbing people in the back, etc. Jesus is very clear in this parable. We are to go into the vineyard and help build the kingdom of God. 
by everything we do and everything we say. In our first reading, we've taken a jump from the story of Gideon into something that happened a bit later on. But if we had read the whole story of Gideon, it's a wonderful example of how often it is that God chooses the least likely one to accomplish his purpose. And if you remember the reading from Monday, Gideon was the youngest son of the junior family. That means his career track is extremely limited. He's never gonna go beyond plowing the ground. And God chose him to lead the people to victory over their enemies who were attacking them. And there's a moment in the story of Gideon, it wasn't given to us in the reading, so I encourage you to read the whole story, where Gideon agrees to go, even though he tells God, I'm, who am I? I'm just, a, I'm the youngest kid in the family. But there's this moment when Gideon takes the yoke for the oxen, et cetera, and all the paraphernalia that would be associated with that, and he burned it. And that was symbolic of letting go of all the stuff he's been hanging on to from the past in order to do what God had called him to do. And the biblical question for you and for me is, what's the yoke in our lives? that we are expected by God to burn, to surrender, to sacrifice, so that we can be the laborers going out into the vineyard, helping to build the kingdom of God. And that starts immediately after Mass concludes. So today we hear this parable. I urge all of us to sit with it, to ask the Lord, what are you saying to me about my life? about what I'm doing out there. And help me, Lord, help me to follow wherever you lead, regardless of the consequences, regardless of the price. God bless you. Let us lift up our prayers to the Father, we pray for our Holy Father, for all the priests and bishops of the church who, who uh, rule over God's people, that they will lead them to the joys of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for each one of us, lay people, that we will um, work in the vineyard, that we will uh, go forth and proclaim and bring the uh, good news of salvation to the people who are lost and in need, we pray to the Lord. Pray for all those who are uh, sick, those who suffer. I'd like to ask prayers for my mother who is very serious and for all those who are dying that they will be comforted and that they will be given uh, the hope of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for um, our own personal intentions for um, those most in need, and we pray for those who have died that they will enter the joy of heaven with all the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Father, hear these prayers offered now at the altar of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for us, but rose and lives forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who become our spiritual drink. <laughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Mm. 
Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you night and day and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. <coughs> With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna <clears throat> in the highest. We give you thanks, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we, cel- as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may, be, may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Myron, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb.
I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharistic celebration is ended, so let us go forth now with love and joy to serve the Lord, one another, and all of those to whom he sends us today. Thanks be to God. 793. Lord, who's love?